All right, let's look at these three properties to do these six problems. For this one, a to the zero. Whenever you take something to the zero power, the answer is one. We'll show you in the future where that comes from, but for now you just gotta trust me. A to the zero is one. Now, a to the negative powers, if you have any kind of negative power, what a negative power means basically is that you flip it. You drop the negative and you flip it. And you now have one over a to the nth. Now, if the negative is on the bottom, and I want it to be a positive exponent, you basically, instead of being at the bottom, you flip it to the top. So your answer is simply going to be a to the nth, because you, this goes then to the top. Here, because it's negative, it goes to the bottom and becomes positive. Basically, you don't want negative exponents. You want to get rid of all negative exponents. All right, so let's try some problems. If I have 7 to the negative 1 half, and if I want to solve that, what I'm going to do is I am first going to do 7 to the negative 1 half, change that to 1 over 7 squared. I use this property right here. Now, from here, it's real simple. That would end up being 1 over 49. That's your answer. Remember, all negative powers flip and then drop the negative. Okay. 12 to the 0. Well, according to this property, anything to 0 is 1, so 12 to the 0 would also be 1. That's it. Another pretty simple problem. All right, <clears throat> this one. Looks like we're going to plug negative 2 in for x. So let's first do that. Negative 2 in for x. Plug this in right here. Now, before we go any farther, let's do what's inside of here. That'd be negative 2 minus 1, be negative 3. Okie dokie. So we now have negative 3 to the second, negative second power. So again, what we talked about earlier is anytime you have a negative power, you flip it. So this is going to be 1 over negative 3 squared. The negative powers flip. And then, last step, well, what's negative 3 squared? Or negative 3 times negative 3? Your answer would be 1 over negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 1 over 9. OK, let's look at number 4 here. Let's separate this into three different pieces. First of all, 5. Well, that's just simply 5. All right, a to the 0. Well, a to the 0 is, anything to the 0 is 1. So this piece right here is just going to be 1. And then the last piece, well, b to the negative 7th, according to this property, negative powers flip. So that becomes 1 over b to the 7th. OK. Can we just multiply straight across? Because you kind of you kind of can put a 1 underneath all of these. And 5 times 1 times 1 is 5. 1 times 1 times b to the seventh is b to the seventh. There's your answer. All right, number five. Three, leave it as three. x to the fifth doesn't change, this x to the fifth. But this negative one-fourth power, remember you don't want negative powers. And according to this property, if you have a negative power, it drops to the front. It, it, it jumps up top. So basically, this is just going to jump up here. And it's going to be three x to the fifth, and this jumps up top with it. And you're done. Because you can't combine, combine x to the fifth and y to the fourth. That's simply the answer. And number six here is this whole thing to the zero. Well, kind of funny is this whole thing to the zero, doesn't matter what's inside of here. If, because of this parenthesis, this whole thing is going to be the zero power. And what we said is anything to the zero power is one. So dumb kind of question, but the answer is simply 1, because this whole thing is to the 0 power, so it is 1.